much. All right. Let us read our panel. He is a research fellow at the American Enterprise Institute and the author of the new book, The Virtue of Prosperity, Dinesh D'Souza. Mr. D'Souza. Good to see you here, as always. He is the national president of the American Civil Liberties Union and our buddy Nadine Strassen. Nadine. Keeping America safe and free, you are. She is a very talented Broadway actress and member of the Creative Coalition. Will be returning this spring to Ladies Man, Sharon Lawrence. Hello, Hello. Kitten. How are you? How are you doing? <laughs> and a big deal TV actor and writer who has been nominated for seven Emmys, and he is my buddy, Alan Thick, is right over here. Alan, well done. How are you? How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we woke up this morning with a new president-elect, and uh, I think we got a hint of what it's going to... Anyway, he, his first public act was to go to church. I, I don't know if anybody's bothered by this, but the minister <laughs> said that he was chosen by God he, he and was... compared him to Moses. Now, I'd like to put ministers... <laughs> I'd you know like what? to say ministers now should go in the same category as the Supreme Court. <laughs> I was going to say... We thought you were above it, but apparently you're not. Well, so. he, was, he was chosen by the Supreme Court, and that reminds me of an old joke. What's the difference between a federal judge and God? And the answer is, God doesn't think he's a federal judge. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Bush, I'll tell you Bush's real prayer. I mean, in a sense, you know, here you have, you have this big graveyard, and they've been, they had Al Gore in there, and they've been tossing little pieces of earth and so on. And every time, Gore kept clawing his way out, you know, with a court ruling. So I think Bush's prayer is, thank God we finally nailed the coffin shut. <laughs> yeah, but, but, I mean... But what he really should be he should, he should he should be taking those ballots to church and hoping he can heal those holes before somebody counts them. I think he's, I think it's just fear. I think it's just fear. Go yeah. to church. You're afraid. Well, I think it's pu public relations. I mean, of course. is anyone bothered by this? That that first of all, who goes to church on Thursday morning? <laughs> Not even the minister. I mean, and. How sincere can you be? Isn't it sort of unchristian-like? Doesn't the Bible, the um, New Testament, say something about don't be as the hypocrites and pray in the street, do it privately? How private can it be when Wolf Blitzer is like, <laughs> any word from the Messiah? In the you second know, pew. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, yeah. a, it's a nice gesture. I mean, that's a now cynical it, point. It's a nice gesture. It better uh, to go to church than go to a party. They celebrate. George W. gets behind the wheel. Dick Cheney has another heart attack. You're back where you started. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's a nice gesture. This whole it, campaign, starting from the primaries, has been so overly religious, I think. And I know yeah. many deeply devout Christians who are offended at that um, dragging of religion into the political sphere. It started when Bush was asked during the primaries, who is your most important political philosopher? Right. And he said, Jesus Christ. But and, this is a non Don't leave him in a greed. I, ex well, I don't think he said Christ, no, but no, God. And, and Gorse uh, said that when he w had a difficult issue, he asked himself, what would right. Jesus do? So I think that... Uh, right, which is wrong. <laughs> I don't want to... The president should not be asking, what would Jesus do? Actually, Jesus... Jesus would not vote for the F-16 fighter. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's not the same job. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's not the same job, mm -hmm. but I think what, what we're so used to in this culture is finding a, a, a way to be civil as, yeah. um, a, as PR. And, and listening to, to the speeches last night, especially to, uh, to the Bush speech, I found myself thinking, is this just, a, a, just an act in terms of, of the piousness, in terms of... Um, where it is that he's putting his, um, you know, his, his best foot forward, or is it really a way to relieve the tension? I don't know if we're going to know that right away. I think we have to be angry about, the, about what happened. It's an incident. This happened. The voting issues. I don't think you can blame the Democrats or the Republicans. I think there's been a lot of that going on. But just like any adult who becomes a mature person or a culture or a country or hopefully this society, you recognize sometimes 
things happen. Yeah, we can be angry yeah. about it, and there's nobody to blame and say, you could have prevented it, you could change it, it's your fault. It's I, nobody's fault. I, but I agree, and, I, and all this talk about we have to heal, they have Larry Gatling write a special healing song. Well, I don't think, you know, I remember at the convention it was all black. Suddenly Chaka Khan's out the window when, once they get elected. But uh, quite, do we, I mean, who's really needing the healing? They are. Quite, quite apart from the symbolism, there is something big that's going on, and that is that American politics has only shifted gears in a big way every 40 or 50 years. I mean, it happened at the Civil War when the Republicans became the majority party. Uh, it happened with the New Deal when the Democrats became, as they have been for most of the century, the majority party. Now, Clinton came in in 92, a Democratic president. He had a Democratic Congress. We've had eight years of peace and prosperity. What a nightmare it is to turn over not just the Congress, but the presidency and by implication the courts to the Republicans. The Republicans, in a sense, now have it all. So that's why this was so hard fought, because there are very high but political stakes. Of course. That's not the issue, though. The fight, wh who would not fight this battle? Who would not fight it? The issue now is... Who do you keep blaming? Who do you keep staying angry at? Who do you right. continue to this, to feel could have prevented it? This issue with the ballot. This, but that's the, it, the answer it, to that is easy, isn't it? The Supreme Court aren't they the ones we can stay angry at? For those of us who would be <laughs> who will wonder. Well, I don't uh, think so. You know, I don't think so. And I, I recognize I've shifted my view because where do you finally say that? Where do you finally set the standards about ballots? I think now we know we have to do well, that. We're well, we're going to move forward. forward on that. You know that's that we right. need, they need new voting machines. I mean, those old voting machines counting your ballots is like Firestone yeah. making yeah. your condoms. You know, it's just something. <laughs> it's going to be a problem. <laughs> And this, this is what has been brought to light. The good news is we are a divided, pretty much 50-50 in terms of the Congress. And thank God for that. If you're going to have this push-pull, at least blamed for everything we have... Lately. What? God's getting oh, blamed for credit no. for everything. Pure <laughs> habit. But God knows. This, this healing talk, it sounds to me like code on the Republican side I for, so we gave Clinton hell for eight years, oh. but be nice to our guy. We deserve a honey Because, you know, it's yeah. just little Georgie Bush. Uh, it also could be, you know, you were... Be nice to him, He's, you know. But you were talking about the PR involved, and maybe uh, it's a preemptive strike against somebody finally counting the ballots and, and questioning well, the validity of the presidency and if the PR and there's a warm, happy, squishy feeling by that time, then uh, maybe but, we'll all be happier and accept the president. But Alan, the people who were not in church with George Bush today were his lawyers. They were still down in Florida trying to seal the uncounted ballots. Do you know that? That's right. Right. They're fine. They want to steal those ballots. Yeah. They do, you know. It's, it's not going to happen. Florida, fortunately, is the sunshine state in more ways right. than one. Right, sunshine laws. Right. It's actually the law in Florida, sunshine. There's, there's nothing wrong with counting the ballots, but what does that really prove? By what's, Who would count them? By what standard? We go back to all the questions right. that yeah. we've argued sure. about. Exactly. All right. I'm done with that. So we have a commercial. Good. <laughs> I don't want to get back to <laughs> Uh, George W. Bush started his first day as president-elect with a prayer service. Yeah, uh, the minister talked about Jesus, and then he talked about George W. Bush. Uh, so, uh, apparently the theme was uh, sons who get their jobs through their dad. I, I... <laughs> now, uh, during the service this morning in uh, Austin, the pastor, I'm not kidding about this, compared Bush to Moses. Oh, uh, boy, and, and you thought Joe Lieberman was pissed off last night. Okay. Um, I want to ask about uh, this, getting away from the election. Tim McVeigh this week said that he wants out of life. That's his New Year's resolution. Dead. Uh, he's been in five years, right? Okay. And he said, uh, four months. He wants to stop all death row appeals and be dead in four months. That's his New Year's resolution. Uh, mine's to lose five pounds. You know, we all have our <laughs> uh, And uh, I say good for him. I say, how about lunch you're, you're tomorrow? You're looking at me because you know I disagree. I do. That's uh, why I want you here Well, I certainly defend the right of a free, mature, competent adult to take his own life. I do not defend uh, an individual asking the government 
we the people to commit the execution. Uh, we have a right to make sure that all legal appeals have been exhausted and that the penalty actually is a Why? legal and just one. Bill, this may not be a particularly sympathetic case, but the principle is important. Suppose there was somebody that was exonerated by DNA evidence and said, I don't care, I want to die, it's better than spending you know, life yeah. in prison. Would he have but the right to do Tim that? McVeigh. Of course not. Well, then his appeals, if they're not meritorious, will be quickly exhausted. But he cannot no, waive won't. them. They go on forever and ever and ever and yeah. ever. That's not true. Yeah. The, the courts have put such a strict limit. They're in a, as much of a rush to be efficient about executing people as they were to finish the ballot count in Florida. A not rush to, get back to, to that. execute yes. people? But yes, people the are on death row forever. They die of old age that's, before uh, we uh, can uh, get uh, to uh, them. No, no, except in Texas. Uh, Bill, Texas. Texas. There have been cases Texas. in become the president oh, elect. No. Been, when it comes there have been cases Texas. in Texas where the Supreme Court said, "Sorry, you've exhausted your appeals, and even though there is evidence of actual Nadine, innocence, you have to die." There was a guy last year. His name was Brandon Wilson. He killed a nine-year-old kid in an L.A. restroom. The only witness was George Michael. I kid about that. Okay. Uh, here, here's his quote. He wanted to die, too. And you know what? By the way, Tim McVeigh's not the only one. 16% want to die. And you know why? Because life in prison is pretty horrible. Exactly. Oh, he should not be allowed to die. He should have to wait out every year in his young life. For every life he took, and it's too easy. Yeah. It's too easy. Well, and the, the, uh, I, I, I would agree if we could. I would. I would agree that we only keep this guy alive for another day if there's a hope that we can find a fate worse than death for this pig. I but personally. You can't. No way. But I'm life saying, as, as a, you know, I, I, I like to be liberal about it. But as a, as a father of a preschooler. I say, if this pig can go by lunch tomorrow, I'm all for it. And, and if we need to take him to Texas uh, and have him fried by Sunday in a tailgate party, please, why would, I, uh, why would we want to keep this guy alive for another The fathers and mothers, the fathers and mothers of people who were killed in that bombing opposed the death penalty. And one of the mothers made Sharon's point. She said, I have to live with this pain every day of my life. We shouldn't let him off that easily. Oh. It, he, it will be the worst punishment well, for know, him. I think I know he's, he's, he's a bad man. But make an order of himself, Phil. You're giving him, you know, the platform. This is a libertarian platform. He wants to be dead. What sort of platform is that? Well, then he can it's say, I'm a martyr. It's the platform where the bottom you know, falls out. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, what it, I mean, you know, the, the problem is that, is that, you know, we all think in this country, and it's fairly unique in history, that death is the worst thing that could happen to you. I'm just saying, saying that. Well, I'm saying that life in prison that, may well be. Life in prison would be the worst thing for him, and I think that's what he deserves for the years that he's put well, everybody else Well, then why don't we torture him, too? I think he's probably getting it plenty of that as it is. Because well, we can't, well, can't sanction that. We can't but, sanction but, that. But, you know, if we want to talk about the death penalty, I really don't think we should focus on him because we could talk about all of the cases of people who were innocent, who have been demonstrated to be innocent, some of whom were yeah, spending that's years a and years. Story. It's, 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 this guy it's is very not innocent. But it's a very and major we all story. Know it. Well, then let the appeals process exhaust itself. But that's it will cruel happen. and unusual. I thought you were the strict con constitutional construction who said we shouldn't be cruel and unusual. You Just think life unusual, imprisonment perhaps. I mean, you're, you're saying, you're saying life imprisonment up. is cruel? Very cruel. Way more crueler than killing you. But why but should they allow that, him but to that's, choose? But that's vengeance. Bill, you want vengeance. If you yeah, want vengeance, you that's what I do. If and you I'm want that's vengeance, that's fairly liberal. That's, that's pretty cruel. cruel. But also, I, it's not, I agree with you. I would, li I would you like want... vengeance. But I would also like to get on with it. I mean, all the money that it would cost and his security. Yes. And all, the, all the conversation and debate that takes place. We have more important things to do. We haven't found a permanent replacement like for Kathy Lee. like a plate of bread and shrimp the moment he asked for it. We have to take a Tomorrow, when our guest will be the man shows Jimmy Kimmel. That's, uh, this was kind of a day of licking wounds, but uh, you know they're going to be okay. David Boys is going to go back to his lucrative uh, law practice. Al Gore will make millions on the lecture circuit, and uh, Warren Christopher is uh, being made into a set of leather handbags. So. <laughs> so
<laughs> All right. Um, uh, I'm glad this election is uh, finally over because we can talk about these Christmas things. I think we've had you, Nadine, on before when we talked about nativity scenes. Right. Right. Exactly. Okay. And that's a controversy. You know, if you have a nativity scene, is it too religious in a public right. place? Right. I don't know. To me, it's just a little plastic baby Jesus. And who cares? <laughs> you know. Okay. So I, I'm on the fence about that one. But listen to this. Eugene, Oregon has banned Christmas trees in public places. Apparently that's too religious. I don't know who looks at a tree and goes, Jesus. <laughs> I, I, no, I, well, you did. 200 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, actually, right. our, our, favorite, our favorite characters, the United States Supreme Court, you'll be happy to hear, have officially pronounced the Christmas tree to be non-religious when it is standing next to a menorah because they each oh, neutralize God. what would be the reward. Well, so much for the wise men. <laughs> menorah, but then what, well, well, what about the Muslims? You know, what should we... Yeah. You know, but I think what, that... What I about, think Oracle... I think Kwanzaa... Yeah, 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 what about Kwanzaa? Yeah, you're coming around to the point, and the city manager in Eugene, who issued this edict, I thought was very sensitive. He, he did it as part of the diversity in the workplace initiative. Oh, he said, God. we don't want anybody to feel excluded, and there were a lot of From people... Oh, he was a, a Grinch. Of, He's a yeah. Grinch. A, a lot I'm of sure people. there was a long line of Buddhists yeah. demanding that these yeah. trees. Yeah. Yeah. No, there were Holocaust survivors who wrote letters to the local newspaper. I read it, you know, saying this is making us feel like outsiders. You can have your Christmas tree in your own office. You can oh. have it in your own home, in your own church. Oh. But I think there's a big confusion here between theology and the culture and Free. values yes. well, that come out of, may come out of religion. No, I'm making the point that, that we're confusing them, that the Eugene guys are saying that because the Christmas tree symbolizes religion, we've got to get rid of it. And I'm saying that's wrong. We've got to separate theology on the one hand but it from culture and values. Religion. Yes, religion. It's a socially uh, warm and happy, lovely six weeks. And generally speaking, I think the Jews and the Muslims are very tolerant about our fanatic obsession with Christmas. They say, this is lovely, have your fun. Yeah. Take away the guns, leave us our Christmas trees. It's just a little fun. You know, it's a bulb and a stand <laughs> and It's a bad tradition. And it's a, it's a time that celebrates the tradition yeah. of giving. I mean, if you, want to be, if you want to be crazy I mean, about it, you can say that Halloween has its roots in all kinds of pagan rituals. Let's outlaw that. That has got to be.